Here's a breakdown of how I made this epic tank in Blender. I'll show you the different stages with lots of tips and tricks on how you can make your own tank. So I was asked to make the graphics for this fun Unity multiplayer game course from Game Dev TV. I made all the 2D sprites and landscape, but wanted to make an epic image for the thumbnail in 3D. If you want to learn how to make awesome multiplayer games in Unity using the new NGO or netcode for game objects, then limited to this weekend, it's only $10. Use the link in the description to claim your discount. But without further ado, here's how I made these cool tanks. The very first thing I did was make some sketches just to get the idea of what I thought would look good. I feel this is a really important step as it stops you wasting time later on, adapting shapes in 3D, which is often a slower process than sketching. I settled for this design in the end, which I think is kind of fun and cute. I actually started with the tank tracks because I knew that was going to be a little bit awkward, so I wanted to make sure they were working before I did anything else. And I start with a plane and just give it a shape and then add a solidify modifier to it. I correct the topology to make sure it's quads just to be sure that there's no glitches later on. Now getting these tracks to follow a curve is probably the most awkward bit to do in the whole process. I start by adding a curve and editing the shape to the track that I want. Then with that tank track selected, I add an array modifier and just modify the direction, which is under the factor settings and you can change the distance between them as well. Then I add a curve deform modifier and choose the curve. Then it should just be a case of selecting the deform axis. Make sure the rotation of each of your shapes is applied and then you can up the count on the array modifier. Now that I'm happy I've got the tank tracks working, I can bring in my background image and start tracing around it. Obviously I have to adapt the tank tracks to the size, so I have to change around some of the parameters, but that's easy enough. And with a reference image in there, the tracing process is quite fast. I keep these separate parts of the tank separate, so they are all separate objects. It makes it much easier to model. And you can probably tell I'm keeping it very simple and basic to start off with. So I'm basically just making a low poly tank at this point. Many of the objects are just mirror across to the other side, so it's a very symmetrical tank. And when using the mirror modifier, I use the base of my tank, the big object at the bottom there, as the mirror object. So I don't move the object origins or anything like that. It just makes it a lot easier. You can probably see that I slowly start adding detail as I get happy with the shape. But it's still very simplistic, still kind of keeping to a low poly style at the moment. There's no complex topology or anything like that. It's all very simplistic. And I think in many ways that helps the design. Too much complexity would draw the eye and take away from its cartooniness. I always make sure I'm completely happy with the outline shape before adding any of these more minute details such as the weaponry or bolts and things like that. So now we've got a nice looking low poly tank, we can start adding detail by adding subdivision surfaces and supporting loops. The supporting loops are what give the edges their sort of hardness or sharpness. Now you can use the mean crease or the bevel weight for this, but I prefer to do it all with topology. I just find I've got more control that way. There's nothing particularly complex about this process. It literally is just adding a few extra loop cuts and sharpening up a few edges. Depending on how it's modeled, you might want to go in and obviously fix some of the topology. This piece, for example, has a large end gone at the end, so I'm just turning that into quads because subdivision surface modifiers prefer quads. You tend to get the odd glitch and things if you don't have your topology in quads. It's not always the case, but quite often. Now, I don't always stick to these rules, and you can see there's a big end gone at the end here, and I just make sure it's got an inset, and then the flat face is planar, so it doesn't cause any problems to the subdivision surface modifier. It feels a bit of a cheat doing it that way and I think I might go in and tidy it up a bit later but I'm not sure I do. But it does go to show that you can get away with a fair bit if you're in a rush. Now in order to create things like the handles it's fairly straightforward. You can take any mesh into edit mode and join it all into one vertex. Then just extrude out that vertex into the shape you want and bevel the vertices so you've got a curve. Then you convert that mesh to a curve. Then in the curve parameters, you can change all sorts of things like adding geometry. I tend to bring the resolution down, then when you convert it back, it's nice simple geometry. Then turn it back into a mesh and you've got a really nice shaped 
handle or whatever it might be that you want to design. Now the texturing makes a huge difference to the overall outcome and how good it will look. For the most part, I use this beaten up metal material, which I'll give a link in the description. It's a free texture I found online. The node tree certainly looks complicated, but here's that texture down here, and it's just a basic PBR texture. I'm using box project, so I haven't unwrapped it as such. I'll talk a bit more about that later though, but the box project will just project it from all angles, and it kind of looks good straight away if you've got a seamless texture. I'm using the displacement from this, so that's going into a displacement node and into the material displacement that gives it that overall sort of bumpiness as you can see there even on this green metal the metal paint is this area here so if I zoom into that it's very simple it's just a musgrave texture into a slight deviation in the green so there's a bit of color variation across there I've also used that musgrave texture to give a little bit of difference between the roughness and shininess across the object the bump is actually from this node up here, which is mixing the two as well. If I show you what this node is, it's an ambient inclusion into a color ramp and the color ramp is set to constant. So if I show you what that looks like on its own, it looks like this. So the green areas are white, the metal areas are in black. And when I show you the result, that's what it looks like. The ambient occlusion is a way of eroding the paint texture, supposedly in the way I've done it here anyway. Now for the big boy one, text across the top there. This was a slightly more complicated technique, but if I go into edit mode, you can see that I've cut my shape in half. And if I select this half with L, select link and delimit by seam. So I've select this half here. I can then get to the position I want, probably easier in isometric mode. So five on my numpad, zoom in like this and press unwrap and project from view. Instead of the texture coordinates for the mapping, I use this UV map option here and I choose the UV map that I've just unwrapped and you can give it a name. And if you have several unwraps on your object, you can give them different names under the object data properties down here, UV maps. I've only got one because I'm using a box project for the other textures. So I've got this UV map here that's plugged into the vector and then into my big boy one texture. Then if I go across to the UV editing, you can see there's my UVs. And there's the big boy one texture going across the top like that. And I could, let's say, scale this up, think a bit smaller, makes more sense and move that into position on the tank object. Let's go back into object mode, see what that looks like. Big boy one needs a little bit of editing going across the side here, I think. And the way I've mixed it in is that I've used the black and white from here as the mix factor. So black shows and white doesn't again, using a constant, I had to bring it in a fair bit just so it didn't have a white outline like this. So I brought it right in, get rid of all the white to show that. And then it only leaves the black and then anything else underneath comes through, which is the green in this case. And there we have it. Big boy one looking really awesome. So hopefully you enjoyed that breakdown and maybe it's inspired you to have a go yourself. If you've got any questions or want to let me know how you got on, then comment below. Otherwise, thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.